get my candle. All right. We... Got me a new one. You got a new candle? What candle are you rocking? Uh, I found this at Family Dollar. It smells like uh, it says it's Ocean Tide. No sponsor. Ooh, nope. that's nice. That's nice. This is a uh, unlabeled candle one. It is a uh, sea <laughs> sea oceanic smell. It is. Oh my god. So nice. So nice. So relaxing. Um, I'm loving it. I don't know why it's called Ocean Tide, but it smells like cinnamon and bay leaves. But I dig it. No, those are good. Those are the relaxing candles. And what's more relaxing is today's session, episode 15. We're here for Icewind Dale with Critical Failures. Uh, we are ready to go. If you missed last session, watch that. Before we get any spoilers, give you a moment to do that. Uh, but with session 15, we are here in Icewind Dale making our way back from the Verbi Caves by the Goodmead Forest, making our way back to the town of Goodmead. Last session, we had some conversations about morals. Is it right or wrong to resurrect a, you know, individual or not? Um, and then we also began to make our way back to the town before bumping into a ghostly area of gravestones, in which there was another conversation. Should we be digging up graves? Should we not? Is it just dirt? You know, whatever. Um, money's money. They're long it, gone. Money's and... money for some, you know, people just trying the to be The answer is no. <laughs> the answer is maybe. Um, I'm a hundred gold richer, so yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, we're amazing, great adventurers. Yes, great. No stone the left ground. unturned. Yes. No grave <laughs> left unturned either. Um, but we did end session one with person. a a banshee scream, uh, which knocked some of the party members down. But that is where we're gonna begin today's session. Right back in the heat of the moment as we transition slides over. Um, I believe last time we left off, we had only one person go down, I believe, and that was Kit, correct? No, it was two. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Gorg. Gorg. Gorg, 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 Gorg my buddy. Gorgeous Gorg. Yes. Gorg. Gorgeous. 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 G
she she's just super ugly and <laughs> horrifying. That's good. That's a good role. Yeah. Uh, you feel a tenseness against your body, have you able to kind of shake it off, and you feel like you have enough confidence and enough kind of um, you know intimidation to push through this. You don't have to worry about a role again. Rex, go ahead with your turn. I'm gonna see my two uh, two traveling buddies uh, either on either side of me on the ground and kind of do one of these. I'm gonna reach in my bag and pull out my notes that I took <laughs> on Torlith. Yeah, I'm gonna read through it. <laughs> Take out my healing potion and decide to pick her up knowing that she's a healer. Thank you. Perfect. So, you heal. <laughs> Uh, what about Gorg? You Gorg is two, coming, all right. Two d four <laughs> plus five. Two d four plus five. Two d four plus five. All right. So that is. Ten points. Ten points. <laughs> you are back up Oops. with no death fails or anything, Rex. Anything else on your Ooh. turn? Um, Frostbite should be out here somewhere. If he is, he has to make the save against the whale. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, oh Barbie. No. Let's, let's <laughs> see what he rolls. Constitution throw. Con for the, for the whale? Um, yeah. For the whale earlier, yeah. 15. He would survive that, and then I just need a wisdom save for the visage. That will make him frightened at this time. Okay. All right, anything else on your turn? Think about it. Um, pulling stone one is, uh, well, I fed Torlith the potion, yeah. so that would have been my action. Mm -hmm. So as a bonus action, I can't really do much. Um, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> tell Frostbite to bite him but uh, he's going to be too scared. He kind of like hovers around there. Next up is Torlith. You're up. Hello. Um, Torlith's going to sort of get up and be like, I told you. Um, would Torlith know anything about um, this banshee or like what it is or anything? You can either uh, give me a history. a history check. Yeah, a history check would be fine, actually. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Yeah. So what you know about banshees is um, they let out these whales that can knock anybody to their feet, but typically they can only summon that once a day. Besides that, they try to kill individuals with their touch that drains them from life. But the only other thing, is since that roll is so high, is you know that any type of necrotic damage will not work against them. You know they might have other immunities, but that's one for a fact that you would know. Okay. I I would uh, sort of yell out, Well I I know this this type and just uh don't don't let it touch you dears. Um scatter. Also would probably know that from the twenty fourth. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um Zombie And hurt. then I would um ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Would you say that was my action to sort of do that, or just to... Uh, no, I'll just have that as kind of like your free action okay. on the turn. It's just a check. Okie dokes. Um, then... Uh, bonus action, what I would like to do... Is to cast... Healing Spirit. Ooh. Which, let me put that in there. <coughs> uh, it's a five foot cube that I can see within range. I'm going to put it uh, where Gorg is initially. Alright. Um, so that he can heal I think it's 1d6 Yeah, 1d6. No action required. Perfect. And that holds up for up to a minute of concentration. That was 5 points of healing, I believe. Um, and then that uh, will uh, yep. right under him there. Uh, as he kind of gets up and shakes his head, um, and he kind of gives you this big thumbs up and goes, You're not really a yeti after all, huh? Uh, Twilight, anything else on your turn? 
Uh, yeah, I have an action. Um, dodge a little bit and put some space between me and it to there. That's what I'm going to do. And do my turn. Perfect. Next up will be Liam. Okay. Oh, um, do people need to make wisdom saves? Oh, you are correct. Thank you for reminding me. Torleth, give me a wisdom save. Oh, yeah. That's alright. I'm good at these. I'll just throw mine out there just because it's my turn. Hmm. Seven, it, it worked out in the end for the 17. Liam, that would be yeah. frightened. However, you can still do stuff on the turn. All right. So, frightened means I can't move closer, right? And Correct. I'm disadvantaged? Yeah. Correct. <clears throat> All right. So, here's the problem with that. Um,. I'm going to say a few words in Primordial, and you'll see the Captain's Cloak fall over my shoulders, and then I'm immune to fright. All right. As this happens, you notice that there is a sizzle around you of arcane energy as you look with this stern face. You are no longer frightened from the creature. Form of dread, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's my bonus action. Let me roll that extra hit points. Where did I put it? It's not there anymore. Uh, it's a D10 plus my oil on so let's just do a D10. Hey, Eight plus five, so... Thirteen. Thirteen? Um, then I'm gonna make two attacks against her with my pack weapon. Perfect attack away. One and two. Okay. Just do this real quick. Um, the 14 and the 17 both hit. Awesome, awesome. And that is a magic weapon, I believe, right? Yep. Perfect. 16 points of damage. Perfect. So as you get uh, bash into this thing twice, the first attack ripping through, and you see this ripple, almost like static across his body. The second one, same thing, almost the same amount of damage. Both of them do full damage on the creature. If she can be frightened, I need a wisdom saving throw. All right. Let me just double check real quick. Frightened. Or she's, she's going to be afraid. She cannot of be frightened. Okay. Frostbite is also going to use his reaction and mm -hmm. deal... Uh, Four lightning damage. Four lightning uh, or, damage? Or have, have Liam do four more lightning damage. Perfect. What you notice it is it will do half, so it'll do two points of damage for that. You can tell there's resistance to lightning. Anything else, Liam, on your turn? Um, stay in put. Perfect. So as you do two attacks against the creature, next up is Lucadios. Lucadios, as you start your turn, give me that wisdom saving throw. Big roll. Mm -hmm. We got 23. 23. We like that. So wise. Um, yes, we do. No ill effect from that. It is your turn. All right. I am going to use Turn Undead. Ooh, yes. It's going to make a wisdom saving throw. Cleric thing. It's a, it's a 15. On the wisdom oh, save coming your yeah. way. That is going to be a 24. Woo! <laughs> yes! Four! Awesome! Perfect. Alright, it is turn for one minute. Or until it takes damage, a turn creature must spend its turns to trying to move as far away as, as it can. And it can't willingly move to a space within 30 feet of you. Perfect. You also can't nice. take reactions. No nice. reactions, no attacks. Anything else in your turn, Lucadio? As you see this aura radiate from your fingers around this creature, as you see the color of the body of the creature turns from this white kind of snow color to a c cool calm blue color at this time attack on its next 
on my next turn. What's a turn? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> oh, you, you hold Everybody your attack. get ready to jump her. Dear. Everybody hold your attack until you see me swing for her. Oh, that makes sense. And I'm going to move here, so it really won't move away from us. Perfect. Anything else on your turn? No, that's it. Hi, right, Kristoff, do you uh, hold your turn, or do you do anything on your turn specifically? I'll hold. Can I see... Would it be an action to look at the Banshee and kind of see if it has a... I'm trying to see if it has a physical form. Um, give me a uh, perception check. Let's see what you perceive. Twenty, uh, dirty twenty on the perception. What you can see is this spirit almost looks like it is cloaked in kind of this aura, but under the cloak you can see what looks to be a softened face of a elvish girl, and you can see in the eyes pain, torment, and sorrow. Almost like whatever spirit inside is so hurt, but the outside is this um, animalistic uh, attacking type of creature. Okay, so there is kind of like a decaying corpse in there. Alright. Yeah, in a sense. Alright, yeah, no, I'll hold my... That didn't count as my action, I'll hold. Perfect. Gorg is going to hold his, but he is going to... You know what? He's actually going to hang tight in that spot. Um, yeah, you'll moment. get extra healing. Oh, yes. Like, is that on your six. turn or on his turn? Yeah, um, he starts his turn in the spirit. Perfect. He starts his turn there, so yeah. No. Let's see that. Alright. Um, next up will be the creature. It is going to try to get out of dodge. It is going to go 5, 10, 15. Lucidus, I'm guessing no. It can't go, it can't go towards oh, me. Oh, I had him right here? Yeah, you Perfect. can't come that direction. For some reason, gotta, gotta... I thought Liam was your token of vice versa. So, 5, 10. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing no reaction or opportunity attack from you? Uh, no, we're going to wait because if I do that, it ends turn of death. Right, it will stay put there. She's gone. That you see, <laughs> out of the way like that. Um, Rex, on your turn, what do you do? I'm gonna hold my attack action All right. for a bow. Torlet, I'm guessing holding your action as well. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get a bit closer though, uh, so I can actually see what's going on. All right. Um, and does anyone need healing? Because I can move my thing as a bonus action. Gorg is like, keep it here. <laughs> I can move it if you would like, but otherwise it can stay there. Um, keep it on board. Alright, in that case, then I will. Can I bonus action Shillelagh and hold on to that? I believe yeah, so. Last yeah, last a minute. Yeah. So Shillelagh! Shillelagh. Um, and. What did I do? I did. Sorry. Just measuring. Christoph. We love Shillelagh, don't we? Mm. On Baldur's Gate, we love yeah, Shillelagh. I heard a little. I heard a little turn on that. Shillelagh! She's kind of gnarly. So I can get that. Yeah, I could, I could go show you how to make Shillelagh. Oh, she's down there. She's disgusting in that game. Yes. Show Shillelagh, he loves his little oh, I love Shillelagh. Uh, anything else on your <laughs> turn, Torla? Um, I'll just hold my action. Alright. Liam, you're up. Anything on your turn? Um. I don't have any spell slots, so I'm just gonna hold my axe. Perfect. I can't make the distance either, so. All right, Lucadios. All right, I'm gonna move up. So right here, I'm going to throw a silver dagger at it, and then I'm going to spiritual weapon it. All right. Damn. Ooh, net 20 <laughs> and a 22. We like that. Let's see that damage. Nice. We like that. So seven points of piercing right there. And then in addition, we have six points of force damage. The silver dagger. Okay, anything else on your turn? No, that's it. But that should trigger everyone's held action. Correct. If you have a held action, <laughs> feel free it. to use it. Did I see where it went? Yeah, it, it's down here. I have light on, so you would have seen it because I, I traced it. So we have a 19 from Liam. Like, and apologize. 16. To... You could do two attacks on the held action. 
Eldritch well, Blast is casting one spell. It's the yeah. only way oh, you can do it. Two of them on the same Yeah, You're good. We yeah. got a 19 but 16 both hit. 10 points, points of and one point. It looks pretty badly hurt at this time as you see the two Eldritch Blasts smack into it, shaking the body as a whole. Um, the 16 will hit for 13. It is right there, ladies and gentlemen. Wait. Wait, he hit a 24. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's I the damage. Do. Okay. I didn't yeah. do my damage. Either. An extra do one damage? point of lightning damage. Because I'm excited right now. <laughs> yes. Kristoff, how do you want to do, do it, buddy? It. Yes. What was, that? <laughs> was that in the middle of Rex shooting it? I don't, I don't want to take this from our boy. Bro, bro. It's, your it's, your it. fire bolt helix is around his arrow. Yes, double it up. Fire <laughs> arrow. And he looks around twist. my lightning oh. arrow. I'll look it's to a, Rex. It's a lightning and player say, arrow. We, and I'll say to Rex, with our powers combined. No. <laughs> Take a seat. Final I'll blast the fire with his arrow. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do a quick spin around with him, and then we'll, we'll shoot our arrow, our fire arrow. <laughs> a little ballet and, moment? Yeah. The final oh, Totally sailing moment. I love it. All right. As you and see, the, the arrow shoots out with a mix of fireballs around it. <laughs> hits right into the chest of the creature as you just see this loud <laughs> explosion of fractals of energy that go in different directions as you see this banshee is dead and in this moment there is a relaxing pause as you guys are standing at two unturned graves one less yeah. banshee in the world and nothing but a bunch of enemy snow around you what do you guys do as, as the, the, are flying. The, the third one before I drop concentration, does anybody else need a cube of love? <laughs> yeah. Just yell over to I uh, do. Christoph. All right, so I'll, I'll my bow in my hand. Prepare for here. trouble. Oh my God, no. Make it double. That is not. <laughs> that is not I'll allowed. Stand, I'll stand with my back to him. I don't know what the yes. height difference on that's going to be, but I think it's going to be right. substantial. With the proper Before camera angle. Concentrations. Um, <laughs> go ahead. One d six healing. One d six. All right. Let's see that. Bad if boy. you need it before I drop it. Oh, Gorg will take any little bit right now. Yep. So Gorg, uh, Lucadius, and I've got one more. I'm still a full HP. Alright, then yeah. I might take it myself before I drop it. Alright. <coughs> well, oh, what healing do I get? Look how he's like, get some of that healing, please. You can roll your own, or you can trust me to roll really grapply. No, I'll trust but you to roll. High roll. You're gonna get a high roll. Trust yourself. All right. Hey, Bang. you got five. Five, there we go. Plus? Uh, plus five, Remember. so that's ten, sorry. Um, and mine is nine. Nice. No, you can use it a number of times equal to one plus your spell casting modifier. You don't add your spell casting modifier to the heal. Yeah, no, it's just uh, 1d6. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Right. No, my bad. I misremembered it. I was thinking about the one from the Shepherd subclass. No, they mm -hmm. nerfed it. <laughs> they nerfed the spell a lot, but. It was really strong. They nerfed Lay on Hands too. Rest in peace, their paladin. Pally. Paladins I mean, are fine. Yeah. I have other healing spells. I just want oh, to waste that one. made it bad one. for 1D&D. &D. Um, Not even 1D&D. &D. They updated it for normal 5e. With, uh, I think, Tasha's. What does it do now? Old Lay on Hands, you used to, you used to get like... Yeah, it's five, five times your level. Five times your level. The new one is you get proficiency dice d4 oh for a long rest so it's like you know two yeah, or three d4 yeah. torleth you use cure wounds to begin to heal is that for yourself yes you that surely is yourself as <laughs> liam uses mold earth at this moment as well liam you take a little bit of dirt out of your pocket and you kind of chuck it into a direction um, of the grave, and you see that it begins to open as the uh, dirt moves around, revealing a small skeleton inside, a wooden toy block, an iron necklace worth about seven gold, and a silver dagger, and on top of the skull is a old, kind of decayed raccoon hat. Ew. Oh, I'll take the dagger and the necklace. <sighs> All right. And I will intentionally do this while Torleth is looking away, trying to heal people. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
<laughs> just because he's not going to notice the huge amount of dirt just lifting. <laughs> hey, Honestly, he's also got Tolith, vertical components too. Tolith is just, she's had enough right now. She's just like, I can't believe this. I told you guys. I t and she's just, she's over it. She's just going to stomp her big eight foot ass like in the direction of wherever we're heading oh, Yucadius, <laughs> you didn't want to resurrect that one too did you no <clears throat> I don't think that one's going to be as useful to me as the other one I mean this one a personal friend of yours I might be willing to see if I can is there an back. intact skull um like eight in the from grave, the bank. there's the banshee. Oh, there's no, no. not. Okay, then I'll I won't do anything. Cardios, how did you even manage to resurrect that beast? Whoa. I mean, it, it was it was crushed. It, there was no recognizing it. I was promised something rather than get what I was promised I got this special little item that could bring someone back from the dead unfortunately you needed a head otherwise and that would have <laughs> brought back Scully but them's the breaks I think we can no. maybe find more of those things. Maybe. You're not looking on dying, are you? Well. Never know. You know what your really, problem is? Not really up to me. <laughs> <laughs> your problem is, Rex. You just don't believe in yourself. And I'm gonna kinda like scruff up his hoodie and start and start walking after two. <laughs> In this moment, as you guys are standing out here in the cold of the forest floor, um, you see that there is some soot that has been piled up by the three graves, as you guys have been able to explore those three. The Banshee has been vanquished. Anything you guys are discussing or doing in this spot at this time? I'd just like to rebury the disturbed graves if they're left yeah. open. You begin to take some time to scoop the dirt back inside. Uh, Rex, as you're there, Lucadio's toilet, you see that the graves are being redug at this time. Um, any thoughts or other actions you guys do before you guys continue moving on at this time? Uh, I, I would pick up my dagger. My head. And, uh, if I can grab that letter oh, yeah. that we found, I'd take that mm -hmm. letter. Oh, I'm just gonna shake my head and continue. She pissed. I'm gonna look at my two new 50 gold rings. You. <laughs> Christoph, you've always like, been the criminal. Sort of, sort of twirl it in my fingers, look at it. Mm -hmm. The Shutter Island plot twist. I'm flip it up and then grab it like that real quick. Mm. Alright, in this moment, do you guys do anything else at this time, or do you guys continue to head back towards Goodmeat? And I'm, to get to <laughs> um, I'm gonna need Rex to give me a survival check because you guys we're gonna continue your guys' way back to good meat at this time. Aye, aye, Captain. Big roll. It's in 19, I'm guessing. 24 nice. is pretty good. Um, yeah. With that, you guys have traveled the rest of the distance between here and good meat without much of a hitch. Uh, what you guys do notice as you guys arrive in good mead is the <coughs> following. Perfect. There we go. Um, inside good mead, what you guys notice is the following. You guys arrive back inside and are greeted with some of the residents giving you smiles and cheers. You notice that not only is there a little bit more vibrance as some days have gone by since the death of the um, speaker, but you see people are out and about a little bit more as you see a few people kind of walk by and wave. Um, the beasts of the forest that you guys have experienced are gone and the town looks to be a lot more relaxed. As you guys approach, what do you guys do? I want to say to the party, you know, 
if we say we sided with one of the candidates for speaker, we couldn't negotiate saying that we did this on their account. And we can oh. quite the bit of favor. My friend has already got that covered. Hmm. We should head to the town hall and see if see what he's doing. Or maybe the metering. Do you find the cleric to be the kind of person that imbibes? I find the cleric to be the kind of person I'd really enjoy ruining their lives. But I thought you liked the barmaid. Well, she's a pretty girl, but... A lot of people... They want her, but she doesn't want the job. Well... As long as we get... Favoritism, and we can negotiate that they visit Air Denival first with all their distributions. I think that's pretty satisfying to us. It, I mean, he's a better candidate. He's already been a pillar of the community for this long. If you trust him, I'm willing to trust you. I don't even trust me, but I think he'd be a good piece on the board. What about you, Kristoff? What do you think? I think right now, I've seen a whole lot of crime from this group. What the hell was that back there? Thank you. Adventuring, Kristoff. Adventuring. Crime. Crime. Thank you, Torla. You get it. I have a question. Mm -hmm. You get it. Is it the answer, the answer is just Is it criminal to loot the corpse of yes. an ogre we slay? Yes. Ooh. I didn't take anything. That's a crime. So you've never taken anything from any of the bodies uh, we've put in the I'm ground. Not, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Then you have no right to call any of us criminal, do you? There's, but but my good friend, there's a difference between ogres and and three folks who have been laid to rest out here. I'll be honest with you, friend. A corpse is a corpse. It can't oh. speak. Oh, that's. I just don't see it that way. I mean, I feel like it's justified. It tried to kill us. Exactly. After I'm, we I'm tried to steal from out. it. Yes. By I'm we, not. I mean you. Yep. Who is stealing? I mean, it is dead. It doesn't need it anymore. It Wait, doesn't have wasn't property dead because rights. Because it attacked us. What's it doing? Torlis, <laughs> Torlis is making sense. Listen to her. I have a question um, for the DM specifically. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Did any of those corpses have elvish features? Um, the ones that were in the graves that you guys experienced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, those had elvis features. Okay. But, here's my follow-up question. We've seen the love letter. Torlith knows banshees are vengeful spirits. Mm -hmm. Based on the love letter, would that tie the female to being a vengeful spirit? Or was that banshee just a random that was in the area? Um, I would say what you experienced was a connection between the graves and the banshee, yes. Okay. I'm just saying, we made 300 gold, and we're all back. And perfectly true. healthy. Yeah. I don't want any well, of that blood money. Neither do I, but it's nice to finally experience good mead. Um, it's quite pretty. We should try um, the mead. It's amazing. Yes. I, um, is there a good place to rest around here? I, I feel a little tired after a... Latest debacle. Uh, there's a tavern with a bed that could fit like six of you in it. Ooh, that does sound nice. Maybe I could sleep diagonal for a change. <sighs> oh <my God. laughs> what do you mean for a change? Can't you just sleep diagonal any way you lay down? I mean... No. No, there's always something in my way. 
It never quite fits where I sit, so to speak. Um, I, feel like, I feel like you just need to pick better places to, to sit. Probably, but, uh, you know, yeah. well, you can't win them it, all. It won't but be I'm an excited. issue in this, in this inn, I promise you. Yes, yes. Can't wait. <laughs> yes, that's okay. a diagonal, dear. <laughs> yeah, but aren't you always kind of facing straight? Like, can you um, sleep diagonally? Or I don't know. I'm gonna give it a go. No. Straight at a different <laughs> angle. <laughs> going to give it a go, and I'm going to go have a rest. Um, I know that you guys have some rewards to pick up. Um, so I, I um, guess we'll meet there. I'm just here for the fun. I see all the, the grave robbing and the looting and the, the pillaging and whatnot. Oh, and adventure. That's that's I'm my wrenching. job actually. Yes. I actually just wanted a letter. I think it's sweet. I think it was a sweet I also letter. think he wanted to see the skeletons. He's kind of yes. a weirdo like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. A good skeleton is fascinating. But I don't believe in disturbing ones that have already been buried, dear. Once you've buried them, leave them alone. Before you've you buried them, about? poke and prod all you like. Science, you know, medicine. But what about if? What about if you unbury them, poke and prod them, and then bury them again? What's the difference? You've disturbed their rest, dear. What about a bad skeleton? How do you feel about those? <laughs> I mean, the only bad skeleton I know of is one that raises by itself. Um. So we did a good thing for the people then. She raised by herself. She only raised because you took her stuff. I didn't personally but, take anything. Anyway, yes, yes, blame <laughs> what not. What's done is done. I, I'm tired, I am dirty, and I wish to go and lay diagonal. Yes. You might want to clean up first. Yes, yes. Uh, I hope that uh, they have they facilities have that can fit me. Yes. Because I need a good token, let me tell you. And I'm just going to march off towards the, the tavern. <laughs> As you march off towards the tavern, does anybody else join Torleth at this time? Or does anybody go any other direction at this moment? Yes, I need a drink. You need a drink? I'm taking go. Gorg with me. Gorg is completely down to go as he cheers and goes, Tamori! As he follows you. Liam, do you follow them or do something else at this time? Um, I'm going to wander around a little bit listening for the voice of the priest. All right, as you begin to we'll see if I can locate him. As you begin to look around for the priest, Lucados, do you go anywhere at this time? Um. Hey, Kristoff. I'm just going to talk to Kristoff for a second. Uh, y yes? You think Liam's good to uh, handle negotiating with the priest? I mean. Do we want this negotiation to be crime-free? I mean, it is political, so maybe keeping it on the up and up is good. Plus, I mean, I want Ter Denegal to thrive. And this is a good opportunity to help do some of that good you're always talking about. Well, yes, if, if we're looking to do some good, I... I believe you or you or I should should be there with him. Oh. Why don't we both go? I think that'd be great. We'd have yeah. two warriors of justice ready to negotiate. Yeah. It's just way too easy to step out of line and do the wrong thing. It takes real strength to be the good guy. Apparently these days it does. All right, we're gonna tail Liam. <laughs> All right, Liam. We're um, gonna. You're just like keeping a healthy distance, I'm guessing. Healthy no, distance. we're gonna go. Like if we if he slows down, I'd I'd catch up to him. Uh, <laughs> Liam, do you slow down enough for them to catch up, or are you on a heavy pace? Um, it's more of wandering aimlessly, trying to hear or locate him, rather than actually trying to do something covert. 
at, then at this time for you guys, as you guys are at this location, uh, <coughs> in just case it comes up, um, you guys are following behind Christoph and Lucario. As you can tell, you you are able to catch up with Liam if you'd like to at this moment. Yeah, let's catch up. All right. You're able to catch up to Liam. Liam, you notice two individuals approach you from um, 6 o'clock, and as you turn around, you see Christoph and Lucadios are following behind. Um, as most of the party has gone to the tavern. Um, and to clarify, have you guys gone to the bed and breakfast, or are you guys going to the actual good mead area? Oh, I got the words confused. No, you know, you're bed and breakfast is where the bed is. I'm sorry. No, no, you're no, you are good. You are good. You're good. Um, they can't where, be that wherever far from I each can, other. yeah, wherever I can have a little dip and then go to bed. So. Perfect. We'll have you at the bed and breakfast then. Liam, you notice Lucadios yeah. and Kristoff uh, approach. What's wrong, boys? Don't trust me. Oh, no, I don't trust you. You just want to... Well, I didn't think it was a good idea to turn in so early. Plus, those clerics can be quite the pill to deal with. Oh, he's, he's a very good man. With very good morals. Oh, yeah, that's... well, excellent. Let's see how happy it is to see us. No sign of him, huh? He was, um, one of the acting officials for the town. He'd be happy to know the Verbeegs are dead. Unless the one you resurrected found its way back. No. He's on his way back to, uh, our home away from home. <coughs> Let's check the temple. Let's. Right. As you guys begin to approach the area, you guys notice right outside the temple gates, you see that there is a crowd of about 25 to 30 good mead residents. And you see that the priest is out there talking. And you can see that he is wearing his priest outfit, but he's also wearing what looks to be a thick coat. The coat looks to be very... Um, you know, professional as he's giving out a speech about how he wants to change good meat and now how he's interested in potentially running for speakers. You're hearing snippets of this speech. As this is going on, you see that he kind of looks over and kind of goes, and I will be with all of you soon. I must take a break. The throat needs a little bit of water. As he kind of chuckles and grabs a glass and takes a sip and walks over and goes, Ah! And how have all of you made it out? Any good news from the forest? Well, um, you will no longer have a verbig problem. <sighs> well, that is a relief. Where is the rest of you? I remember a few more of you in the area. Um, one fell to the cold and the others went to get a clean up. Interesting. Um, as he kind of clears his throat and he goes, I would like to let you know I'm, first off, very pleased to hear the noi uh, the news about the Verbeegs. Um, but I also want to let you know that things are going quite well here in Goodmead. Um, I really, for some reason, kind of had this epiphany on a few things that need to be changed inside this town. And I feel like you guys have all inspired me in that way, so thank you. I was thinking maybe... One thing we can do is maybe fix the relationship between us and Dugan's Hole. You know, that rivalry, the wars, the bloodshed that's been going on for several centuries, it, it deserves to stop. And I think with me as the new speaker of Good Meat, I think that's a possibility. I really would like to say that I appreciate you, and as a reward, I would recommend going to the Good Meat Hall. I think that they have something for you there. As he kind of like taps Liam on the shoulder and looks at everyone else with a smile. <clears throat> Thank you, my good speaker. If there's anything else you need done, just let us know. I'll head to the watering hole. He says, your nose. And farewell. And he looks over at Lucadios and Crystal and goes, Is there anything I can help any of you with? Oh, yeah. There is uh, quite a few things. But I think this could be mutually beneficial <laughs> to us both. <laughs> Um, would this be something you'd like to have a personal meeting about, or is this a fair place to discuss this? 
Does it look like people are over can overhear what we're saying? Uh, there's a few people scattered, but like a one-on-one -on -one kind of dialogue. Like unless somebody is like really listening in, unlikely. I want I want. I would love for Liam to still be with us, but if he's leaving, I, I haven't gone there. far. I'm short as fuck. <laughs> yeah. Um. Liam, why don't you just stay for a second? Let's talk privately. Yeah. Okay. And hopefully the uh, the cleric will lead us into a place where we can speak privately. Um, you see in this moment, um, the priest begins to take you guys into the temple itself and kind of walks inside there. Uh, Lucadios, Kristoff, and Liam, do all three of you guys go in there at this time or no? Yeah, yeah I'll go. As you guys go and you see the priest sits down and closes the door and leans back and goes, ah, a little bit of quiet isn't that bad. <laughs> so, no. give me your proposition. Well, we tell everyone it was on your order that we killed the Verbeeks, giving you quite the opportunity to help guarantee your position as speaker. And you do a wonderful job of bringing back Care Denival, making it the first place all exports from good made to go. He kind of leans back, goes, So, what you want me to do is have priority shipments to Care Denival and exchange to be able to use your triumph inside that force as a token of potential popularity for this competition? This election yeah it does a great deal of good for you obviously your heart's in the right place isn't it of course it is oh want to do good also we've done a few other services for your town like I'll what? pull out the still beating vampire heart in the jar hmm. this was killing people in a cabin of the woods then I'll show him the hag's head again. He looks at it, raises his eyebrows a little bit, and goes, This could also be more proof that you hired him. I and see. then I will pull out the eye that I took from the male verbi. You see, with a raise of the eyebrow, he goes, I think that we have a deal. Under one other circumstance, if possible. And you see, he pulls out this letter that's folded, and he goes, if you're planning to make your way to Dugan's Hole, would it be possible for you to drop off this potential peace agreement to their speaker? In exchange, I can pay you up front for your service. What do you think, Kristoff? You want to bring peace to a well, valley of injustice? Of course. I... Sp uh, speaker... Uh, potential speaker, apologies. What was your name again? My name is Speaker Rassi. R A S. -S I I don't recall if we've officially met. Yes, um, and pardon me for saying speaker. I have not gotten that title yet, but I believe I am close. Wishful thinking. Well, what was your what what other sort of beliefs do you have? Well, you know, why why don't you have a seat? We can talk about this. Well, I am sitting down, but excellent. I believe that religion is important for a town, unity, community, and also safety. But I don't think that economics is that far behind. So what I am thinking with good mead is expanding the exports of the mead to the different towns and potentially uniting them, starting with us and Dugan's Hole, fixing some of those rivalries and those relationships, but also making good mead prosper. I think that is what all good speakers should do. And with this, as he shows the letter, this letter will be the beginning of a compromise between us and Dugan's Hole. And if you do go there, you'll see they're not the easiest people to compromise with. But I think with a level head like mine, who is not stuck in his ways of making this faction happy and vice versa, I think a fresh start is well needed. Indeed, indeed. Well, I like what I'm hearing. 
your your general stance on crime, what, what would you say? That Crime's is? bad. I would say that any criminal should be arrested and or executed. The um, young gentleman that was found at the tattoo parlor, he was executed yesterday, um, strung out outside and frozen to death to Oreo the god. <laughs> Yes. I see. Um, but I know that there is still more to that case from what I've heard from the guards. Um, that there might be a potential second suspect, potentially a second shooter at the Grassy Knoll. <laughs> I'm sorry? Uh, nothing. Never a mind. Crossbow was involved? Um, they're not sure. Forensics is still on it. <laughs> what is that? He kind of looks at you and blinks. He goes, there might have been two people that killed a tattoo parlor shopkeeper. A lot of words for it in one title. Well, Rossi, <laughs> uh, I want to let you know. It, it, he's still holding the letter, like outstretched, or has he given it to someone? In his hand, yes. Okay. If he's offering it up, I will gingerly take it from him. Uh, and and he pulls out of his bag what looks to be this um, sack of, let's see how much. 120 gold pieces that is inside the sack. That is an upfront payment for if you get around to it and also for all the help that you've done to good mead. I want to make sure that we have a good relationship from the start. And the money will Rossi, still be there. I will see to it with my life that this letter gets there. He smiles and goes, and I appreciate you for making sure that this town is safe from criminals. That is all I ever want. He puts a hand on you and kind of like taps it and looks at the rest goes, and if any of you need anything else, please always feel free to come back to the temple. It is time the good meat is back on the map. Let the meat. If oh. it'll help your case, you could show the villagers the trophy heads of the monsters we've slain. I think that'd be a great idea. Make them feel safe in their town again. In this moment, um, he begins to settle back into his residence. Is there anything else you guys do at this time? Uh, uh, Rossi, just a moment. Yes. I, I got emotional back there. Um, who am I? Who are we taking this to? Uh, the speaker of Dugan's Hole. It is about two hours away south. Um, it's not that bad of a place. I would say that just be a little cautious because it is a unique community down there, to say the least. Very well. well. I mean, we're a unique cast of characters here. As you see kind of a nod as um, he goes, if there's anything else that you need, please let me know. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Cleric Rossi. Hopefully someday, Speaker, as he begins to leave at this time. Is there anything else you guys do at this time? Head to the tavern to get a drink. All right. Uh, you guys are at the tavern. For the rest of you guys, did you guys all go to the bed and breakfast? Yep. Oh, me, uh, me and Gorg are at the tavern. It's you and Gorg are there. Yeah. Toilet, you're getting some I needed rest. A, I needed a bath and some rest. All right. <laughs> um, as you begin to get some rest, uh, is there anything you do or anything that you plan on doing as you're at the bed and breakfast by yourself? There's a large steamed bath as well as the giant bed. I'm just going to enjoy finally having a nice bath instead of uh, being out in the cold and just enjoy the luxury of it. Um, and yeah, just try and figure out a way to sleep diagonal um that's that's my plan All right. um as <laughs> most of you guys begin to make your guys way over to the tavern that's situated right next to goodmead hall you guys notice that two of the main employees of the um of the good mead hall that are there they're selling various meads and alcohol to everybody as you see the older gentleman kind of waves over and the younger lady waves at you guys as well as you guys are inside the tavern at this time is there anything you guys do besides get a bunch of alcohol me and gorg are already hammered <laughs> but before everyone else shows up 
as you guys are hammered at this time, you see Gorg has his arm around you and goes, Buddy, I will say you did a fantastic job back there. Sorry if I got a little, you know, teary-eyed uh, about some things. I think, uh, I don't know, I think he kind of like looks left and right and goes, I think Kristoff is starting to rub off on me a little bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, Gorg, we'll talk about that later, but there's not... Uh, can we get another round, please? I made it double! <laughs> I fall over? <laughs> as they kind of chuckle at this time. Uh, you notice as a little bit of time goes by at this time, Kristoff, Liam, and Lucadis, you guys make your guys' way inside Good Mead and the tavern. As you guys see, alcohol is there as well as the two shopkeeps. Anything you guys do or discuss at this moment? Oh, I think that walk. one real well. I think now we have a good opportunity to help those good folks that care then of all. We got a little bit of public backing. Public backing? <laughs> what are you doing? Sleeping with the speaker? <laughs> oh, if only no. it was that easy, we could send you to do it. Oh, no. Gorg saved himself for the right lady. But she has to be uh, someone who can handle an adventurer like myself. So, like, seven feet tall. Uh. <laughs> At least, at least 6'5". At six 6'5". Long white hair. You think she's a yeti at first, and then a woman in wild after you? It don't matter. I'll be honest. Do I like yetis? No. Would I... Would I find the right yeti in life? Maybe. You know. Or you can only hope. <laughs> I hope not. Um, hey. As he takes a big drink and looks at you. Gorg. Is that your full name? You um, have like a last name or something. He kind of like holds off for a moment and he kind of like freezes with the drink in his hand and puts it down and goes, Um, why, why would you say that, Lucadios? Most orcs I know have uh, strong last names like uh, Thonax or uh, um. Light Bark or something. Usually a very strong name. Dickhead. Can't you tell by Gorg's very large shingle tooth that his last name is Gnarl Tooth? I probably never it? told you. Is that your full <coughs> name? Well. Seems like it would be to me. You see, he takes another sip and just downs the rest. He goes, All right, fellas, I'm going to tell you a little something, but you have to promise not to laugh. Liam is totally not interested. He's trying to see <laughs> Bye, Liam. As he uh, watches Liam. I was trying to surprise at the bar. Yeah. I think it's her. As you walk over that direction to talk to the two people at the bar, you see Gorg looks over at the remainders of individual and goes, my, my name is not really Gorg. Um, it's, it's kind of a funny story. Didn't really want to bring it up to you. But my... My birth-given name is a little bit different, but let, let's not get into anything else besides that. Deal? All right, that's fine. It was, it, <laughs> if you wanted to really know, it was Gregory. Um, but it, it didn't really, it, it's not a bad name, but it didn't really have that power off the lips like Gorg. Gregory, like, you're not going to run away from a Greg, but a Gorg, a Gorg really gets the feet moving. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Especially if you have like a title after your name. Gorg, yeah. Gorg, what was your title? Gorg the Intimidator. Um, if uh, I had my full legal name, it'd be Gregory Seussman, and it really wouldn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> as, as Did Gorg. I Seussman? Seussman, yes. Yeah, Christoph, it's a good, I think now? it's a good thing you, you changed <laughs> Gorg. You know, uh, you don't really look like a Gregory to yeah. me. Even my mom made fun of it after she said it. She said, maybe not, but then, you know, stuck around. It caught on, yeah. Yeah, it, well, it, it did. You'll always be Gorg to me, if it makes a difference. I, I, I've been Gorg to everybody. The Thieves Guild, I made sure I said my name was Gorg, because I guarantee you. Oh, 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 oh. Right. Here's a lappy name. Good folks. 
Let's not talk about the guild out loud. But... All right, then we'll just say the the little creepy ones, we'll call them. Uh, you know, they, they do their thing, and you got to have a powerful name to be a part of them. Think of Rex and Frostbites, and Gregory just doesn't really fit the mold. Yeah, you got to be tough. I understand that. But I, I think if it makes you feel better, all of us have pretty strong names, intimidating names, like Liam or Toilet or Kristoff. <laughs> Like, there, there are some pretty good names here that really ring a bell. Yeah. Well, Gord, if you ever want to return to your roots, you shouldn't be ashamed. But, uh, have you... No, no. Have, well, have you... Consider this. Gorgory. It's similar. It's, it's, it's uh, combining who you are now and who you were then. You can't forget your past, Gorg. That's where all great artists draw inspiration. Give me a persuasion check. I want him to be Gorgory Susman. Oh, sorry, that's. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. It's, it's I, not intimidating. I, I was about to say. I'll, I'll 17, make sure 17, you that. Um, you see that there's a pause and a raise of the eyebrows. He grabs another drink, and this one really gets his body rock. He goes, "You know what, Christoph? I never really thought of it like that. Why should I be afraid of a name when I have such great friends like all of you?" Gorgody Suzman will be the new name for now on. And I'm going to hold it proudly. My name is Gorgody Suzman. As you hear someone in the back go, Shut up! Uh, hey, who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Who? Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Gorg would have blown up on it, but Gorgory is fine with it. Well, you can still be Gorg, too. Don't Don't think of this as you abandoning... Gorg. Well, what if when I get really mad, I'm Gorg? Like, it's Gorgon time, but regular every day is Gorgory. Could we, could... I'm intimidated already. I think it's great. I think, yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I think it's just gorgeous what you're doing. <laughs> does he, does he have a reaction to, to Lucadius's comment at all? Um... Does he realize what was just said? You see, he kind of like raise eyebrow, and he just kind of brushes it off. It's not canon. Not canon. Well, yeah. Good um, for Liam at this time, though, Liam, as you walk over to the bar, you see the old man looks. He goes, "Ah, oh, hello. Um, you looking for a drink?" Well, I was told by um, Priest Rasa that, or Rossi, my apologies, that there was some kind of reward waiting for the heroes of your fair town and I'll point in my group. Oh, yeah, well, yes, we do. As he kind of goes in back and scurries off and he comes back with what looks to be a large wooden crate of 12 bottles of honey mead. As he slides over, he goes, 12 bottles of our best mead and, as he kind of looks left and right, he goes, do you have about an hour of time potentially for something even more special? Well, that depends, sir. Is this a special... Flesh, or a special of illicit stuff. Maybe I approach that differently as an old man trying to coax you for an hour of your time, but um, I have a special business opportunity for you for doing such a great thing for good mead. <clears throat> we'll lay it out then. Um, Alavesa, please come here. As you see, Alavesa approaches uh, with a smile. She goes, um. The owner of the Goodmead Hall is interested in you and your friends making your own special brew that, if it's good, we might be able to sell it and give you guys some profit as well. Well, boys, what do you say to a mead with our names on it? I like money. <laughs> I'm down. I'm concerned that this man is doing some sort of crime with how he's phrased things to you. <laughs> I will be investigating him. Um, Christoph, we're heroes. I'm going to do things like this. Though. It's not illegal, I promise you. It is actually not illegal. It is completely legal. It is my business, and if you want to make your own mead, we'll begin selling it if it's good enough in the next month or so, and anytime you come back to good mead, we'll give you some kickback. 
Is that slang for something? Does anyone know? It's that means, slang it means or commission we'll get money. a percentage. We ah. get money. Nice. You'd be getting... Legal, fully yes. legal, non-blood money. Completely legal, and it would be about 25% of all profit. And of what that. time do you I... commit to get that? There, there is no crime. You guys... Uh, you guys just pranking you. You guys killed those verbi creatures of all legal ways, and... Save this town. And we're completely grateful for it. Well, I was just trying to catch you out. Seems like a legal business. Well, I don't really know anything about making me, but oh, it's for easy. the good of the group, it might, we might as well try it. Oh, well, come on back to my back room real quick if you'd like. This isn't going to be a sex mm. thing, is it? Why are you the second person who said that? <laughs> there is no sex it. going on here. It I is... knew it. No, no, I'm no. I'm going to wink at his wife, coyly. <laughs> Liam's back! Uh, <laughs> give, me a, give me a charisma check. All right. <laughs> charisma or persuasion? Uh... Let's do let's do a persuasion check. With a oh, dirty God. twenty, she smiles. She goes. She goes. I think that you'll have a good taste in me. As she smiles, as he goes. Oh yes, yes he does. He looks like he is ready to make a fine brew. As he kind of scurries off in the back. All right, let's uh, let's see just how weird Liam can make this. <laughs> uh, who goes into the back room to try to make a meet? Oh, I'm going. Okay. I'm, I'm going, going to make a meet, but I'm going. As you guys go back there, you guys see that there are these large buckets of different mead. And here are the various different ingredients. And there's a few other scattered ones that you can think of that are available to mix. There's honey, salt, seaweed, barley, cinnamon, pumpkin, apples, peppers, lavender, sage among the walls, uh, baskets of grapes, berries, carrots... There's caramel, mint, peppercorn, juice, chamomile, pine, cherries, butter, mash, ginger, and even more that you can see. A wide variety of ingredients that you guys can make. He goes, I'll give you an hour or so unless you need more time, but I'll be sitting here enjoying, he opens up this bottle, a nice reserve that I've had sitting around for the past 35 years. If you want a glass, you're more than welcome to have one or two. Typically, it'd be about five, six gold a glass. Hmm. I'll have one. It is a malty caramel type of ale, and it tickles the tongue and also burns the throat. Okay. So what here in lots of problems. <laughs> What's the problem? Liam's eyes are going to turn glassy blue. No, mm -hmm. don't do He's it. He's going to pick up a handful of blackberries. And some caramel. And hold them out for, um, I don't know how they make mead back in the day. I know how to physically make it now. But he's going to hold them out to them. Mix these in, and we'll call it black water. Ooh! Sensational. Uh, roll me a D100 for me. Do it. Do it. Okay, oh, a two. No. Damn. Um, the second he puts it in, you see he looks oh, down and no. goes, did I get the heater on? And he turns up and poof, into his face as he is going to take nine points of, um, we'll that call it actually does damage. taste good together. He goes, just fuck up lighting the fire. I think that I'm afraid of blackberries. Oh, as he kind of wipes his face, it's kind of singed, and you can see these speckled oh, no. spots of birds. He goes, can we try a few different ingredients, please? Oh. <laughs> it, it might be your hands are a little too shaky. Let me try. And I'll try to do it myself. Right. He is a very, very old man. Yeah, as you're going to put it in, um, give me... You don't have a brewery kid, do you? Uh, let me double I check. Do. I don't think so, but I might. <laughs> if not, we'll use the same role we've been using for cooking. Um, I do not have brewer's kit proficiency. No worries. Um, what have we been using for food lately? 
I think cooking, you said, was wisdom based. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see. Let's see what ingredients might work together, etc. Yeah, this is That's really cool. my wheelhouse. Hold on a second. Can I give him guidance? Do I have that? With I a mean, five, everybody. you see it just kind of spurts all different directions. She goes, like I said, um, maybe not that combination. Maybe the the chemicals really don't mix well together. Um, as you see, his wife kind of laughs in the background. She goes, there's nothing funny about somebody trying to be creative. Please, continue. What do you say we handle? I'll sit here for the whole hour trying to do this. <laughs> as you're going to take your time to... Um, make this um mash work together is anybody else trying other different concoctions or mixes at this time I, yeah I'd like... go ahead <clears throat> well i was just gonna say i would like to approach lucadio some kind of kind of whisper to him uh yeah, this guy seems pretty bad at making meat i think it's a front i think there's crime <laughs> in here what are you picking up on uh you know what he's entirely too successful and this being the biggest and most profitable mead up here I think it's more so Liam <laughs> I, I think if we put some stuff together I think me and you could throw something up there why don't you grab two I'll grab two and we'll just see what happens very well alright I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna grab uh Apples mm. and uh some cinnamon. Yep, that's the one I was doing. That looks uh, good. Feel free to give me that wisdom roll. What up? It's just um, a straight wisdom roll. Yep. What about the D one hundred? Uh oh yeah, actually give me the D one. Are you letting him make it for you? I'll let him make it for Perfect. me. Perfect. Then just say straight D one hundred. Then on that. Thirteen. Thirteen. Nice. You see he looks down and I really don't and you see that one of the apples just shoots out and hits him in the head. Um <laughs> he is going he is Surely going to die as it hits him right in the head with enough Damn. force, cracking his skull in front of his wife, and she goes oh, and she screams inside. What do you guys do at this moment? What? Is he dead or is he just like How much damage did he take? He's not uh give me a medicine check. I, I'd like to cast Spare the Dying. Okay, you can cast Spare the Dying on him as you run up to him and you stabilize him. Uh, Lucados, as you see Kristoff do this, <laughs> you can tell he is just knocked out. As a moment pauses, as everyone kind of freezes, and you hear <sighs> a snore. She goes, oh, oh my goodness. You, you, I'll, I'll cast Cure Wounds you, you couldn't have hit him anywhere else but the head. He has a sensitive scalp. And she kind of like laughs a little bit knowing that he's fine. Uh, she's not taking it that seriously at the moment. As he gets up and goes, Lavender, Lavender, Lavender. Um, how's the... Maybe we should add that. How's the, how's the bruise going? I'm just going to look at her and say, you could always show me how to do it. Oh, Lord. You see, she kind of has like this like <laughs> side smirk to her as, uh, is there anything else you add to the brew? Do you do anything by yourself at this time, Lucadius, with the brew? Oh, no, I'm going to add the lavender. As we then give me another D100. Let's get over 60 at least. Oh, God. No, never. Good luck. Uh, nope. Seven. It's the oh fact my. that we keep rolling double zero. At this time, uh, he goes there and does it. Do a roll. And boom, he gets hit in the head, and he is out. And she goes, I think it's best that we let him get some rest at this time. Um, let's figure out another time to maybe make some meads. I... I think Charles Buzz, my husband, is a little bit uh, out of commission now. But, this is the most fun I've had in a long time. But <laughs> thank you for taking care of good mead, as I kind of like this raised eyebrow, kind of. Um, if you need anything, please let me know. Is, is this how he always makes the mead? Uh, oh, no, the no, not at all, actually. I would like to make a slide hand check. Come come back in the morning and Tola will show you how it's done. Buddy. Uh, <laughs> what do you do with the sleight of hand check? Um, oh no! Remember when we found that train? Yes. Oh, Lord. And we found that frozen bottle of aged fairy mead. Uh, 
Yeah. I would like to try to sneakily pour that into the vat I'm working in and dump the waste. So it's just that good frozen crisp mead that's been chilling for 500 years. Perfect. You put it inside there. Uh, he's unconscious for the moment, uh, but she goes, um, do I want to make sure I let him know that you finished your brew? Well, you're more than welcome to wake him. She looks Thinking over. Good. You see two black eyes and a bloody nose as he's just... <laughs> I'm going to heal him. He gets up and goes, <laughs> Dandelions! Um, oh, it, Dandelions. We it, that, that too, first of all. Is the brew done? Oh, yes. He goes over and takes a cup full and sips, and you see his eyes go, he goes, uh, that, that there is a hit. That that might be the best brew that I've ever experienced. What, what was your secret recipe? Uh, I did not see him do that, so I'm just going to list off apples, cinnamon, <laughs> lavender, and dandelion. He runs over and he kisses your forehead and he goes, My dear sir, we're going to be rich with this. Thank you so much. I'll make sure that we get in production right away. You said uh, dandelion, uh, lavender, and uh, apple. Uh, yes. And cinnamon. And cinnamon. Yes. You have an incredible palate, yes? Uh, I believe so for being this old, yes. Take it. Swirl it in your mouth. You tell me the ingredients. Or you are the brewmaster. Mm -hmm. Wink. I'd take... never get tired of Oh, there is a way. <laughs> uh, is this your brew that you made? Yeah, this is the, the frozen stuff from the train. Uh, he takes a sip and he, uh, his eyes even go even wide. He goes, that might be the elixir of the gods. That is sensational. How did you... How did you make this? Apples, oh, cinnamon, lavender, dead no. <laughs> Cinnamon, lavender... <laughs> Okay. Yeah. What kind of check these guys go broke. would I have to make or would he have to make to identify the ingredients in this alcohol that's 500 years old? That's so good. I don't know if that's physically possible. He rolled a 22. So he'll get some of the ingredients. He gets notes of berries, notes of cinnamon, and a little bit of mint. But he can't get all the rest. He goes, I'm going to have to tinker with this elixir and maybe it might take some time to make it right but I can get something close um, any other recommendations that you have or a stand name aside. Oh. stand aside oh. let me do let me get a crack at this I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna take my favorite tea <laughs> personal tea I'm gonna grab some chamomile yeah. a lemon yes. some honey yes. and some vanilla I Hell give yes. me a D100. That sounds delicious. I want to make that right now. <laughs> 20, we're climbing the ladder as he tries and he goes, here. <laughs> that is also very well. Maybe we can sell both of these. Can can both of you give me some names for your guys' beverages and we'll get them on the shelves as soon as possible. Please, any name oh, will do. Beverage. That's a good name. This. <laughs> no. I don't want to be crime. <laughs> the criminal cup. <laughs> not the criminal cup. Any, well, any name will do. Why not use your beautiful wife's name? Oh, Alavesa, yes. As you see, she smiles and kind of like blushes as she kind of like scurries out of the room for me. She goes, and you even have her blessing. She hasn't blushed since our wedding. Or the last time I almost died. <laughs> um, yes. I love Vessa Cider. I love that idea. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and, and and for you... Maybe drop a cider. Maybe just a Vessa. <laughs> yes. a la Vessa. A la Vessa, yes. A taste of a la Vessa. Um, and then for you, what, 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 what would your beverage be? Um. <laughs> just little... talking to me, right? Yes. Rex's relaxation. Potion. Rex's relaxation. Uh, uh, um, maybe not potion. We can change the last uh, one. But. Liam, what are you trying to do at this moment? 
um, just trying to scurry away from my friends. Uh, following Maybe go somebody out of the back room. Uh, as this is happening, I mean, he looks. If and goes, somebody wants me to. Yeah, you begin to walk there. And he goes. That is a great. Where is he going? Where is that mastermind going? Um, sir, Bob. No need to leave. We we are really on to something here. Well, I need to bathe, sir. I'm covered in monster blood. Don't I don't want to get in the meat. Don't you want to taste the Valavessa? It's it is a perfect idea. I I, I love this. <laughs> I've never experienced a taste this swell. Yeah, maybe we should all have a taste of Valavessa. Yes, we all should at the same time. Grab a glass. Grab a glass. Hard. This seems I grab a glass. I'm so I glad not... I'm asleep right now. <laughs> uh, the, on, the, the, me, me and Scully good. have been sipping because a cup of this shit got us drunk. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty strong. <laughs> As this is going on, anything else you guys do is he begins to make teas at this time and other brews. I'll wait till he's <laughs> occupied and I'll leave. <laughs> I got an idea. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. All the bad guys with ideas are happening. Oh, no. So I have a giant vat of this stuff, correct? Correct. Oh dear. Can I open up the top? Of course you can. I'm gonna add just one more ingredient. Oh no, is it gonna be? I wanna add a drop. Just a single drop oh, of that really strong black mead that we got. Oh my god. Uh dropping the whole thing or just in your cup? In the in the whole vat. Okay, dude. One little drop. You remember in like Mom and Jerry when you added that yes. one little secret poison and you skull see the sizzle the in the skull? Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fine. Uh yeah, you do that and you can see that instantly as that drop goes in, you see it And I'm gonna mix it really good. This yeah. black elixir that kind of swirls and then dissipates with all the other ingredients at the moment. Um, you see Gore kind of like leads it back goes, huh, looks like it's going to be good. <laughs> um, do you try it? I want him to try it. Oh my God. Who do you want to try it? The brewmaster. He takes a sip. He goes, all right, don't You're mind another. punished enough. This has been a lot <laughs> for today. It should put your hair. It should put hair on your chest. Oh yes, I think it. As he falls, collapses, <laughs> unconscious, uh, drunk instantly off of that yeah. sip. As you guys are there, Gore goes. Oh, looks like you killed him. <laughs> um, should we you leave walk now? Up to Rex, give him a fist bump, and then go find the wife. All right. As you head over that direction <laughs> towards the wife, um, Christoph, Gorg, and Lucidos. Anything you guys are up to at this time? I'm checking for a pulse. Uh, like, yeah, this guy's gone down. You, uh, you notice he is alive. He is just absolutely bla blasted drunk. This will make us so much money. I'll tuck his little cap underneath his head and take his cup. Dude, so imagine if he can actually replicate these alcohols that we just gave him. <laughs> the brewmaster. Um, yeah, he doesn't die first. <laughs> kind of is, look, look at look in the chat in the meme chat. That's literally what I did. Christoph, give me a D one hundred. You got it, boss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Twenty four. You notice a man next to you at the bar. Uh, he. <laughs> Ew. He smells. Like... <laughs> he Surprise. Uh... <laughs> He smells of alcohol. Uh, his eyes are puffy red, and his beard and his hair is oh tangled. God. As he has what looks to be eight empty glasses and another one in his hand, as he is drinking <laughs> and sniffling, and looks at you, goes, "What are you looking at, punk?" <laughs> I'm, I'm not quite sure. What's, what's, clearly something is troubling you. I, you, you have, on. you ever lost somebody that? Meant the world to you? I have. I have. <laughs> Sir, tell me your trouble. I'm, I'm pulling up the seat next to him. I'm sitting down, arm around him. I, I, I'm sick the of... The drunk bonding. I'm sick of criminals, sir. I'm oh. sick of it. If, if I look at him, does he look like me? Um, Give me a... What would that even be? A perception check. Are you me? 
<laughs> are you, are you? <laughs> if I'm you, are you me? You uh, can't really tell what that perception. I'm you. You, uh, it looks very similar, like, with the beard and hair, but it doesn't look exactly like you. It looks like an old person. Okay. It's kind of perplexed that he looks like Time me, Time travel stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he is a wizard. He could technically do it. Yeah, That's Kristoff true. doesn't know how. Come on. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, Kristoff, old Kristoff, Kristoff, Kristoff knows how to throw rocks with his yeah. mind. With speed. <laughs> I, I, That's it. I hate criminals. I, I hate them. They've ruined my life, my entire life. I want justice. Justice. My good <laughs> man. I have the word justice tattooed on my body. He, he looks over and you see that he takes a big swing. He goes, you can't help me, sir. What yes, is done is that yes, I've I lost can. a lot. I've it. lost two. What, what, what do you need? I, I, Tell me what you need. I am. I want vengeance. Person. I want vengeance for what has happened to my dear daughter. Uh, what, what happened? I. She, she was on a business trip and criminals got to her. They, they killed her, sir. They killed her. Where did the where did this happen? I don't know. It just in in her travels, she she was making her way, and something happened. And I haven't heard anything since, but I know I know that she's she's passed. You know. I've I've lost a loved one too. Oh, you what, don't. what was her name? You don't you don't know what loss is. <laughs> You don't know how painful it is to lose your daughter, my dear Zarola. The pain. Yes. The pain. To live a life of justice, to try to save people, to, to keep this place safe. And it got to her for doing the right thing. She could have been like anybody else and just found some small job. But she wanted more. And that was what killed her. <laughs> well, you know, venturing is... It's like an ocean, right? There's ice all around us, and ice is... Ice is a, ice is a crime. Where, sir, sir, I've got, Where are you going I'm with got, this? I, I think I knew your daughter, sir. You see, he kind of, like, sobers up right away and looks and goes, What do you mean? I, I... Zarola? The Zarola? We, no last name given? We call, we, her nickname was Za or Z. Z, yes? Yes. I, I traveled with her for some time. <sighs> it, 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 do you know what happened? It, it, how, how do we know we're talking about the same Zerola? That, that could be a common name. Well, well. Lucky for you, my good man. I happen to be an artiste. And I will take out my book. I, uh, oh, and I've burned all the pictures. <laughs> oh. Go on, show oh, me. A shame. Uh, let me do a quick sketch. Give and me will... a performance check. I love this. <laughs> a semi-recognizable drawing is made, uh, roughly, with the time frame you've had to draw this, of course, not skill-based. Um, oh, no, no, I've got it right here. I can show you exactly what I've drawn. Oh my god, what is it? It's, I'm excited. It's good. I mean, it's. I'm so excited. Good. Oh please! I'm kind of scared to look at it. No, 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 no. There's nothing to be scared. <laughs> of. There's nothing to be scared of. Here it is. Here it is. Sorry. Took a second. <laughs> now, my good man, is this her? Is this your beloved daughter? Um. Uh, For a description of the image, I don't know if you can even see it on here, but. 
Um, you see a squiggled face with two eyes, a smile, and potentially bangs. And is that the letter Z above? Indeed, indeed. My handwriting is something left to be desired, but you can tell here. I mean, she wore the hood, she slayed the monsters. Sometimes she loved art, sometimes she hated art. Carried around a crossbow. I, um, as you see, they pause, she goes, It sounds so much like her. Um, how do you know her? But how, how, how do you guys relate to each other? <clears throat> mm. We were on a crime together to, to stop criminals. You were on a crime together? Yeah, a crime. <laughs> he was. A, 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 she was a criminal? I, I misspoke. Oh, the dark side got her. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> yeah, <didn't. laughs> we were stopping crime. We were stopping crime. <laughs> I just uh, think about crime so much. What happened to her? What? Did she, did she ever make it? Or no? What do, you, what do you mean by me? Is is she potentially alive out there? No. I fucking knew no. it. As he takes a big sip of the drink and bashes it down onto the table. I knew it. Sir, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. It's. I, I take no pleasure in delivering this news to you. I. What, what is your name? I'm, I'm Christoph Hansen. Wait. She wrote letters about you to me. You are the one that she fell in love with. And we're going to take a pause from the session there for an intermission. We'll be back in about <laughs> seven minutes or so. We'll be back.
we are back from break. Back inside uh, Good Meat at the moment. Oh, Liam, good stuff. Um, as you're here, Christoph, you're talking to um, this individual at the bar as he lays that information on you about the letters that have been sent to him. He goes, you, you're Christoph. Uh, y yes. And he kind of digs in his pocket and he pulls out a stack of about 20 to 30 letters. And he kind of slides over and goes, these are all about you. She, she, that's the only reason why I knew that something might have gone wrong is because the letters stopped. I know it's a lot to take in, but I'm I'm shocked. I I I it, it, it's all it's always been about you and he kinda opens and sniffles, he goes, She talks about uh, you you guys fought a serial killer in Bryn Shander. <laughs> we did. He flips he goes you guys got in some arguments about some things about art? I, w I just was confused. She, she said she loved my art, then she didn't. Well, I mean, the letter says that she always did like it, and she, she feels bad about saying that she didn't because she was upset with you about other things going on, um, but that she actually loved the attempts that you did at art. I, I guess the only thing that I can say at this time is whatever happened to her, you gave her a reason to fight and friends that she was able to spend time with. As he grabs another uh, bottle and pops it open and begins to drink, he goes, you seem like a good person. Whatever trouble that you're getting into, get out of it. Don't go fighting these monsters. Don't. Don't put yourself in the same spot that Zerola's in. Sometimes you have to know when to stop running, you know? It happened much too soon for her. It wasn't meant to happen how it did. Did, um, did she ever tell you why she monster hunted? Before. I don't, I don't know if she ever did. She owed a lot. She had to take out some money from some of the banks to help keep our house afloat, especially since her mom passed. And as you can see, I'm not really able to work that much. Um, but she did that to keep the house no, standing in a place for us to sleep inside um, Bremen. But once those bills started to pile up, she had to work, and it's the quickest way to make money is to monster hunt. There's so many places and creatures that you can find some pretty good coin and relics to sell. Um, so she did it for me, and I feel like it's on my hands now. Like, I'm the one that dug the grave and put her in it, you know? You you didn't. It was her choice. I mean, she, she did what she had to, but you can't bring this all on yourself. She, she did have one more letter that she told me to give to a special someone if for some reason the time came where I met them. And he kind of pulls out this crinkled piece of paper that looks kind of like he bent to kind of fold it. And he kind of like shakingly hands it over and goes, don't read it in front of me. I, I refuse to read it, but I think it's meant to go to you. Do you take the letter? Oh, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll take the letter. Okay, this is what it says. Oh, 
right, that is what it says. As you see this letter, do you open it? Well, he said not to read it in front of him. So no. We'll say you hold on to it for now. Um, okay. As he kind of nods and just begins to drink quiet. I'll, I'll order a drink for both of us. Or two separate ones. He puts his arm around you and kind of leans on you as he begins to get the drink. And we'll switch over to potentially another leaning session as Liam, you walk outside and you see Alavesa out there and you can see she is smoking what looks to be a rolled up piece of paper and tobacco as she's out there kind of unfazed by herself. <laughs> Just going to walk up to her. <clears throat> Pull a small leather pouch out of my backpack. You know, I've heard the tobacco up north is pretty good. Have you tried any of the southern Colovian brand? I have not. Um, but I Would wouldn't mind like? trying some. I'll open it and give her a sniff of the good tobacco. She takes a sniff and smiles. She goes, if you're going to have a smoke, I'll have one. All right. As he I'll roll out a fantasy cigarette. Yes, a fantasy cigarette. Um, mm -hmm. As um, she stands up there for a moment and goes, "Are you from Good Mean, or even Icewind Dale?" I've been in the Dale a few times in my life, but no, I'm from the South. How far south? Uh, from my hometown to here, it took about three months of travel before getting to the anchorage that brought us up. It's quite a journey. Did you take the ships across the Sea of Movie Nights? Mm hmm. She smiles, she goes, <coughs> I'm from Waterdeep. Um, I've only been inside Icewind Dale for maybe seven, eight months for the wedding. So I'm not really used to the cold. And to be honest with you, I'm hopefully trying to get out of here soon to um, see an old friend back at Waterdeep. It's always nice to see an old friend. Yeah, you could say that. As she smiles, she goes, what makes you come out here? Besides almost bashing my husband's brains in with apples and kebabs and acid, um, you seem pretty relaxed. What's this have a situation like that? <coughs> I knew he was well taken care of. <laughs> for and better or for worse. It's been dangerous in these parts lately. Yeah. Didn't want you to get hurt. I appreciate you, but trust me, I'm not leaving until I get what I want, and I'll be going right back to Waterdeep when that water melts for the few weeks of the year that we're able to travel out of here. And what do you want? <laughs> I think that's a little personal. Maybe I should ask you, what do you want with Icewind Dale? Big place, nothing but ice. I mean, there's really not really a career you can really make out of here. Oh, there's one career that thrives. Like this. And I will pull out um, the legendary knucklehead scale. Oh, is that is that from a dragon? Actually, from a knucklehead trout that weighed about eight hundred pounds. Oh, she kind of like, kind of like raised her eyebrows. Goes, you caught that here? Yes. My. Fiance in water deep. She loves the fish also. Sorry if that um, bursted your bubble. I will say that I have a sister in water deep, and she is looking for a suitor. I'm just gonna tell you this. There's nothing you could say that will burst my bubble. She smiles. She goes, "Well, how about this? Instead of bursting your bubble, how about I?" She so kind of like pause. She goes. Do you do more than just solve monster problems? Do you do any other side jobs? Well, um, 
we've solved the murder. Mm -hmm. um, we've brought in a bunch of criminals for various crimes. Uh, one time we were sent to investigate a, a house that people thought was haunted. It so, just depends on the day. Would you say that you're a good person? You really don't lean on the other side of the law for anything? Even for coin? I will say that I try my best to be good. What's your name? Liam Felderman. She kind of like raised an eyebrow. She goes, okay, Liam. I was going to bring something up, but I don't want to really burst your bubble that much, especially if you're a man of the law. Not a man of the law. I just try, and I'll kind of look inside. Try not to let them see the darker side of things. I see. Sometimes you have to bend the rule. Well, what I, what I can say is, I do miss Waterdeep a lot, and Jarlbuzz has a great business here. He does a great job selling good meat across all the shitty abandoned ten towns. <laughs> um, but let's just say living here is not going to be a permanent decision and I would rather have what I need to leave quicker sooner than later if you're kind of catching what I'm trying to say. I believe I understand. You know, Jarl Buzz is a great man a, a genius and you, you know over the decades of him selling mead and ale and cider he he's accumulated a huge huge pool of gold and i'm so grateful for being so financially stable with him it's just i would love to be able to bring some of that back to my fiance in waterdeep if you're catching my drift You'd love to be able to experience the love that you really want. With a few more thousand gold in my pocket, yes. Um, but see, the problem with the law of nice wind is when you're married, you're married until death. And I'll be honest, my family does not like divorces. So kind of in a tough spot here, and it's already been a few months. And I miss the sun. I miss seeing deer, birds, and... Not snow every other day. Oh, darling, trust me. I can handle the job you're off. Well, if you can do that, it's going to take the better half of a few weeks for some things to be arranged, but I can pay you up front a little bit, or if you want, I can give you a little bit bigger of a sum if you're able to get things situated in a way for me to be able to leave, if you know what I mean. I've got a few ideas. Well, just in case, she kind of smiles. Don't smiled. forget to smile. Oh, I'll smile. As she smiles and goes into her pocket, she goes, if you need a little bit of help with that, you see she shows you in her hand and kind of rotates this object. Have you ever heard of Midnight Tears before? Oh, yeah. Yes, I have. Let's just say that the remainder of my inheritance and a little extra financial push for my fiance, um, I was able to find and stumble upon one of these at the right place. And it could be a <coughs> really, really good ingredient for a great tea, wouldn't it? A great sleepy time tea before mm -hmm. bed. Well, I'll be here all night trying to help him figure out what I put in that barrel. And if you find a great concoction that works and gets the job done, I'll be in this back room waiting. And I'll make sure that you get your share. You have a deal, my lady. She smiles and kisses your shoulder as she leans back and continues to um, 
inhale this um this flavored vapor um as she goes i wish you the best of luck liam godspeed oh, i don't need the gods darling he will as she smiles and i'll finish my smoke and walk back inside with this vial all right um, as this happens, you see he is drunk, sleeping. Kristoff is in there talking to uh, this individual at the bar. Gorg is by Rex. Lucadius, what are you up to at this time? Um, I took this opportunity to grab a table kind of away from everybody. Uh, I ordered some food. I'm kicking my feet up, and I just have, uh, like, my notebook out. I'm just kind of looking outside and enjoying the moment and quiet. Right, as you're having this moment of quiet, give me a D100 roll. Ooh, I am very good at these, apparently. <laughs> Ooh, 62. 62 is not bad at all. At this time, you're kind of hanging around the area, um, and you get a cold chill that kind of comes from one of the windows. It kind of shivers around your drink, and you hear a faint whisper in your ear, and you can tell that this is the voice of somebody that you've made connections with before. And from the inaudible words, just from the understanding, it is assessing how you've been and if you need anything to continue your work and duties. Uh, is it, do I feel like, since I've heard or encountered this voice before, that I could just think my response or should I say it out loud? You could just think it. Um, I'm going to say... Uh, Oh, I'm doing just fine. I'm really just trying to get things rolling so I can finally have that face to face. And as there's this pause, you feel that that wind slowly begins to disappear, and you can even see the top of your glass has kind of this frigid kind of frost that permeates on it um, as that aura has ceased around you at this moment. Um, as that happens, Rex, are you up to anything at this time? Um, at the moment, no. I would just be uh, continuing to drink with Gorg and gamble if anyone is in the vicinity. Right. As you begin to drink and potentially gamble, Kristoff, you've been by this individual for a time. Is there any other conversations or things you do at this moment? As you can see, he is about to doze off from drinking too much. Uh, would I have learned his name during our conversation? Um, yes, his name is Gail. Any anything more than that? Just Gail? If you want his whole name, it's a Gallivander. So Gail Gallivander. Hi. Yes. I I don't I don't know how we cross paths this evening or afternoon. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad we did. I'm, I'm just... I'm sorry. Just... Make sure that you do right for my Z. <laughs> make sure that you follow the law. That you live a good life and make her proud, whatever... Wherever she is. Did... Did she at least have a good burial? Or a place that I can see her? I don't care if it's in the woods or anywhere else. We had a ceremony for her. What was that ceremony? It's, it's, it was a, a, a warrior's funeral. She was celebrated by the town. I see. It's You'll know the town. You'll know. She... I know. You know. We, we <laughs> both know the town. If I oh, knew, man. I'd tell you. Towns have names. You see... Yeah. Just like the one oh, you're from. Man. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, where were you from again? Uh, <laughs> that <seems to laughs> slipped my mind. Uh, I've had one too many sips. Ah, ha, 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 ha. But, uh, but, air but, denim. You know, uh... Yes, it's it's suddenly come to me as if 
from from a divine source. Go to go to Cardinaval Kale. You'll you'll find her there. You see. Well, uh, the ceremony. He has fallen asleep while you were talking to him. Uh, <laughs> shucks. It doesn't even matter that I totally remember now. <laughs> Anything else you do at this location? Yeah, before I leave, even though I know he's asleep, I'll just say to him, uh, Gail, I'm, I'm, everything I do is for her. And I'll leave a little drawing behind. Do you read the letter at this time, or do you hold on to it? No, I'm going to wait till I get back to like a, a better room or something. Perfect. As you do that, um, Liam, do you leave Alaves at this time? <coughs> I give her her space. All right. As you give space, Christoph, do you head back to the bed and breakfast as nighttime is approaching? Yep. All right, you head off over there. Uh, Lucadios, do you head back to the bed and breakfast, or is there anything you're planning on doing inside this location? No, I was just going to have dinner, and then once that's done, I'll head back. All right, a dinner of bread. There's a beefy deer stew that has some venison and vegetables. Um, and then on the side, you also had a few pieces of charred toast with jam. So it was a good meal uh, in good mead and a good break um, <laughs> as you're able to get some rest. As you see Gore kind of lives, he goes, but yeah, I, I think we should go head back and get some sleep. Uh, it's, it's been a rough couple of hours. Um, but if you want, I can see if they can give us a few L's for the road if you want. Is he talking to the bears? Is he talking to the rocks? You see, is talking to the empty stool next to you, and he pauses and looks at you. And goes, <laughs> and you too, if you want, Lucadios. Mm, I think I'm all right. I'm gonna go, kind of, uh, guess help carry him back. Yeah, he needs your help as you kind of drag him as he kind of sings these songs and these different shanties. As every like twenty feet, he kind of like looks over, and goes, "You're pretty all right, Lucadios. You know that." You're pretty all right. I don't care what they say about you at all. You should. I no. think it's always hysterical <laughs> what they say about me. I don't think nothing's funny about it. I think you're one of the brightest minds in Icewind Dale. <laughs> and not because you use light on yourself or anything like that. You're smart, too. Yeah, I tend to find a way to survive out here. But I gotta say, Gord, you've grown on me a little. <laughs> like a facial beard growing every day <laughs> I try my best I um I I will admit I've been a little bit soft lately um I think it's just because me and Kristoff have been getting closer but I'll toughen up for the next few battles and things of such um sorry if I've let the waterworks drop a little bit back there you know sometimes it happens even to the best of us why would you need to toughen up? Because I, cause I'm Gorgory. <laughs> I am a, a new man now who is going to make sure to keep the party right on track. Well, just make sure to have some fun every now and again. You don't want to become boring and stale. He kind of like nods and kind of smiles as both of you slowly make your way back to the tavern. Um, at this time for um, Liam... Liam, you notice that Jarl Buzz is back. He is awake, and he's kind of like rubbing his head with this large slab of ice as Alavesa's in there, and she smiles and goes, um, Liam, if you need anything else for the evening before you go, please let me know. Oh, I just had a hangover cure for you, man. He's willing. Ah, oh, he looks up and goes, Oh, um, the hangover cure? I, I, I don't get hangovers. I, I'll be honest with you, by these two black guys, it looks like I got attacked by something. I... I just don't remember. Well, let me give you something for the pain. Oh. Um, I, I learned about this particular tincture on a sailor vessel. Oh. It really helps you to come back to yourself in painful situations like this. It'll slow the bruising. It'll help it heal. Oh, well, I, I appreciate you. Um... You're all so kind for being visitors of good meat. As he takes a sip, he goes, Ooh, ooh. It, it, it's supposed to burn like that a little bit to um, clear the sinuses, well, yes? Yeah, and I was going to cast Prestidigitation uh, to make it taste like blackberries. 
okay. instead of what the poison actually is. It has a little bit poison of a sweetness. Poison for Cusco. Cusco's poison. Yeah, Cusco's poison. It has a little bit of a sweetness to it. It's not that bad. Thank you, sir. Um, <coughs> I, I don't want to hold you too much longer, but you're more than welcome to come back tomorrow and we can work on some other cool concoctions together. You should really get some rest, old under. We've got a lot of work to do tomorrow with those concoctions, and I want to be spry for it. Yes, I'll, um, as he takes off his socks, and he goes, looks like, oh, we need to change those. Um, looks like I'll just get some sleep then. Thank you for being an amazing person. And I'll wait for him to leave the room before I say anything else. Right, as I'm he just sipping on a cup of beer. Leaves the room to take a nap. You feel an arm go around you and a kiss on your forehead, and she goes, is it done, Liam? Yes, but I could make it untraceable if you just come find me when it happens. It's going to be midnight, so ten minutes? Yeah. As she waits... Make it look like he just drifted away in his sleep. As about ten minutes go by, there's this kind of eerie quietness inside this area. Most people have began to leave and get some rest for the night as um, there's this kind of pause and waiting that is going on at this time. And then when the clock strikes midnight, you hear from the room a gagging. I'll close the door. <laughs> the door closed. She goes, she goes, must have been a rat. Must have been the wind. Must have been. Um, as you hear this muffled screeching, but not loud enough to be audible beyond this room, as you hear, I've been poisoned! <laughs> in silence. As she looks and goes, I think uh, my husband has finally went to bed. Good. If you could just give me a moment. We'll never know if there was anything foul. And... What should the storyline be for this if I'm questioned? Well, your husband is a very old man. And as people get older, sometimes they just pass in their sleep. And I believe that if I use you or your friends as a reference, that'd be okay? If they bring anything up where I'm at tonight? Oh, most definitely. We've been here most of the evening. And I... I already assume that you have a good relationship with the guards. I saw your friend with the puffy blue coat talking to them earlier. So, looks like they'll Those believe me. the heroes so. of good meat. <laughs> you are the heroes. As she smiles, she goes, and let me give you your payment. As she kind of walks in the back and comes back with what looks to be this uh, black box that she kind of opens and unravels in front of you and you see inside is 250 gold pieces and in addition to that you see that there is a purple gemstone that is worth 50 gold and such so goes and then once the money begins to transfer of all make sure that there's more that approaches um have you been to Bryn Shander before yes actually next time you go there give it about a week or two ask to make withdrawal for Liam yourself. You said your name is Liam last name? Vandal. Vandal. Expect triple that number inside there in a few weeks. Okay. She smiles and she begins to walk out to her, her bedrooms at this time. And here's where things get weird. Oh, no. I'm going to walk into his room. Oh. <coughs> We'd love to. And close the door behind me. Door's closed. Now, we know Liam has odd eating habits, correct? Oh, no. Uh, he does have some odd eating habits. Please don't eat this, man. Please don't eat I'm this, I'm going man. to. But you understand... His odd heating habits, yes? Yes. And I'm going to cast one of the most underrated first level spells in 5th edition. Ooh. 
Nice. And remove all the toxins from his dead I body. love it. I love it. Um, you touch his forehead, and you see that the uh, blackened veins on his face from the poisoning slowly seep away up. But he is dead. But there's no poison. Gently place him in the bed. Do a couple things I learned from saying Lucario to prepare Zerola and wipe down his body. Make sure he's clean. There's no signs of struggle or bruising. And just press to digitate all the dirt away. I love it. Do you head back to the bed and breakfast at this time? Gonna knock on her door twice. She opens and she goes, Are you looking for a second payment? No, Mm ma'am. I'm just telling you the job is complete. She smiles, she goes, I wish you well on your new life. I wish you well on the greatness that comes to you, and don't be afraid to ever visit Waterdeep. We don't mind um, visitors, me and my fiancé. I'll see you next time I'm in town. She smiles, and uh, she closes the door. Do you head back to the bed and breakfast at this time? Yep. Perfect. As you head back for... Uh, Torleth, you have taken a bubble bath. You are relaxed. You found your zen for the evening. Um, as I'm you're sleeping, as oh what? Um, once I sort of hear people come back, I'm gonna like kind of startle myself awake because I would like to speak to Kristoff. Right, I believe Kristoff would be the f- first one back. I believe at this time, uh, Kristoff, you. So. You approach inside, you see Torleth is there, um, just waking up from a nap. You walk in there after the experiences you've had. Is there anything you guys discuss at this time? Um, so Torleth's going to sort of startle herself awake, and um, she's going to sort of say this strange thing that i um, never really heard before. As she sort of startles awake. And, um... Is that, a, is that then, like a, a language? It, it is, yes. Is it... In... Abyssal, perhaps? It is not. Then I do not know it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, oh good, you're back, you're back. Um, I wanted to talk to you before we go to sleep, dear. Um, I've, I've been, uh... So I had an idea that I would like to do something nice for you, dear. And um, if you wouldn't mind, I would like to uh, to scratch one of my runes into uh, into your um, well anything that you would like, and I can uh, sort of protect you a little bit, dear. Um, I think it's, Christoph, uh, Christoph would be having some some flashbacks real quick. I, I, I'll I'll explain it to you. Basically, like if you get in trouble, you just need to tap the rune, and uh, and and it hopefully could save you if uh, if you're in you know bit of bit of dire trouble there. Um, it, it, it's just a ward. It, it's it's nothing harmful. Um, but I just thought it would be nice, seeing as you're the only one that sort of well isn't a criminal. Um, and I think we need to look out for each other a little bit. Um, but but it's up to you, dear. You it, it's it doesn't cost you anything. I just uh, I had the idea and I thought I'd ask before we go to sleep. It takes me a little bit of time just to you know carve the runes, but sure, sure. Well, I mean, as long as you you said you have to scratch me. Not you, dear. Is that, is that, um, something, oh. something that you own that you could touch. Um, something you don't mind me carving into. Um, sure. it, it will disappear once it's used. So, oh. the the rune, not the object, dear. Oh. Um, so it's only temporary. Um, sure. But but whatever you'd like, I can inscribe the rune. Um, or I can even sew it into your clothes. Um, it's really up to you. Well, sure. I have wool. What now? Well, I have this cloak. It, it seems to already have some magic to it. Will that interfere? 
it, it shouldn't. Um, just remember to tap it if you get in trouble, and it will cast the the ward spell. Um, so you you'll have that there as a fail safe, dear. And uh, oh. I'll 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 work on that and get some sleep. But I just wanted to check in. You're doing okay? You seem a little rattled. It's just all this business today with with the crime. Thievery yes, is yes. is one thing, you know. I'm just, I'm just glad nobody killed anybody. That would have been that would have been <laughs> awful. I, I, I don't know yes. what I would have done. Are they usually like this? It's we, we've had some problems with group morality. I see. But I, I I don't know why, but I seem to trust you. But uh, you, you you believe in them? You, you think they're a good group? I, I've seen good in all of them. Yes. Okay. Then then I will I will stay and I will help you if uh, if if you will also help me with my task. Um but, but yes, if dear, if you need anything, uh, please feel free to come to me. Um, and uh, I, I hope you enjoy your rune. I'm, I'm going to get some sleep. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And sleep. Toilet, you go to sleep. Chris, off. Do you do anything else before yeah. bed? Uh, nope. That's it. As you close your eyes and drift off to sleep. Um, Gorg and Lucadius, you guys are the two that walk in. Next, you see Gorg goes, All right, little buddy, I had a blast tonight. Um, if you want to drink again, you seem like a fantastic drinking buddy. I don't know if you drank any at all or a lot, but you were fun to talk to and fun to laugh with. <laughs> um, you get some sleep. Oh, I intend to. You rest up, Gorg. As he kind of like... Day tomorrow. But... It, what are we doing tomorrow? <coughs> well, tomorrow we start making our way to a new destination. Uh, are we going to East Haven or that Dugan's Hole I've been hearing about? <laughs> I guess it all depends. But we'll find out in the morning. Yep. We'll either at East or we'll go to the Hole. <laughs> As he smiles and he gets <laughs> some sleep at this time. I'm gonna know. I'm gonna like look around, and if everyone hasn't returned yet, I'll just kind of just wait around for a little bit. As the last straggler walks through the door, Liam, you walk in and see Lucadio is like a disappointed parent sitting there looking at you. <laughs> as everybody else is asleep, uh, that is who you Turns see the light on. awake. And where were you? Um, that is what you see. Meanwhile, how is it you keep getting separated and unaccounted for? All that happened was I had a little fun with the last. You can't blame a man for having fun that okay? Well, I'd be quite the hypocrite if I told somebody not to have any fun. Be careful. You're not exactly having the same kind of fun I am. Oh, that might have changed tonight. Then why the change of heart? Do the others appear to be asleep? Um... Wait. You hear um, quite snoring and breathing from the main bed. Uh, you get the sense that everybody is asleep. Let's just say being a good guy didn't protect the people I can. Nobody's a good guy. All that matters is whoever has the pen at the end of the story. And that's why we rack up allies. So we'll be the hero. With the pen. To be honest. I 
I could care less either way if I'm the hero or the villain. I happen to really like what I do. So I do it. But you don't seem to be liking what you're doing. Oh, I enjoyed it very much just a few moments ago. So why the change of heart? It's easier to stop pretending. Nobody's gonna corral this group. We can't force them all to think one way. One lie, why not just be me, truthfully and honestly? I don't think that's what you want to be. Eh. Maybe it is. We'll see. I guess so. Can't wait till you tell us all what fun you had. Well, do you want to know? No. Okay. You'll see in the morning. Huh. It's like... Again. It's like a birthday is coming. It'll be a nice surprise. And as you guys begin to go to bed at this time, is there anything else you guys do? As Lucadios, you go to bed, uh, as well as Liam. Before we end session, Lucadios, you feel a warmth on your chest. And as you feel this, you get the sense that some of the events that have transpired tonight with innocent blood slain has given you a sense of empowerment and a sense of power as you can give yourself at this time five temp hp for the next day and Ooh. as you guys go to sleep we will end today's session right there yes. a very heavy session um today to say the least lots going on from combat with the banshee uh moral dilemmas per usual um going back to good meat at this time as well a lot of great things going on, but we'll be back next week. Same thing, same situations for episode 16. Figuring out what happens in the morning the next day. Where do we go next? East Haven, Dugan's Hole, etc. Uh, but one thing for certain is we'll be back next Wednesday. And session will be a little bit shorter as we'll have a little bit of a critical recap after where we'll be able to discuss some of the sessions that have transpired, get to know a little bit more about the players. It'll be a great time. Be there. Um... Once again, this is Critical Failures from me to the everybody on the crew and everyone else. We thank you for watching and hope to see you next week. Have a good one. Bye. Mm -hmm.